Hi, we're on section 5-2 and uh, it's about cash discounts and we've got so many different things to talk about on this section including the financial calculator and using a date function. So a cash discount is one given to like a business or something when they're purchasing something but as far as figuring the cash discount that's pretty similar to what we've already done whenever we were talking about a trade discount or a series discount <clears throat> excuse me and so if you notice this the cash discount amount is the net price times the discount the cash discount rate same thing that we talked about last time we can also also use complements on these to find them and then we have to deduct any return goods or trade discounts or freight charges before we figure a cash discount so you'll see what I mean as we get started here <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so on this particular one, we have a list price of nine fifty, defective goods of sixty dollars, a trade discount of um. <clears throat> let's see, I'm looking for this so I can find all my numbers. A trade discount of um fifteen percent. The freight is paid by the seller. Now, what happens with that? Is the seller pays the freight and then the buyer pays them back so they pay to get it to you but you have to pay them back for that and then there's a cash discount of 3% if the invoice is paid within 15 days <clears throat> and so um, whenever we're looking at this we have different calculations we have to do as we work our way through and the first the first one is that we're going to take nine hundred fifty dollars and subtract sixty and that gives us eight ninety all right so we took out the defective amount right and then we get this trade discount of 15% and so we're going to take the trade discount by using the complement and that would be um, 80 that would give us an 85% complement so 0.85 and we would owe then 756.50 from there um, we're going to also take the cash discount we're, we're going to just consider um, that we are paying it notice it said what is the dis the net amount you should pay the supplier if you pay within the discount period and then when does the discount period end if the invoice is dated 1221 so we're going to then take the 756 50 and multiply it by 97 percent right because that's the other three percent that we're taking off and then that gives us 733.81 and notice as we've gone through this we have not um, put back on that uh, $25 it says what is the amount uh, the net amount you should pay the supplier so now we have to add on $25 for the shipping and that gives us a total of seven fifty-eight now <clears throat> on the next part it said what does the disc when does the discount period end if the invoice is dated 12 21 17 well that means that the discount period is going to end um, 15 days later so we're going to add 15 days to December 21st so we have 12 21 17 we add 15 days and you could simply count this up if you wanted to but let's look at this logically there are 31 days in December we're on day 21 so there's 10 more days left in December and then there's um, oh let me write days on there and then five more days in January so the end of discount would be on January 5th 2018 in this case okay
So that's just a little bit of an introduction. And then we're going to um, do some uh, things with the financial calculator and the date function. Now we find the date function by pressing second four um, because the date, hold on, is that right? Second one. It looks like my little circle is kind of out of where it should be. It should be right here <clears throat> because the date function is right above the one on your calculator. You'll be able to see that. And then um, we'll use these keys of compute, enter, and the up and down arrows because we will be scrolling through on our calculators to get to the next part. All right. So if you look at this one, if we're going to enter these, we have to put them in in a certain way. So to enter July 4th, 2018, we put in the month and then a decimal point. Zero four for the day, we have to use two digits. So if it's a day, you know, just a one digit day, we have to put a zero and then two digit, a two digit year. And this is the format that you have to use in order to get the date entered correctly. And you'll just get used to that as you uh, use this calculator and practice. All right, so when you look at this <clears throat> and you've pushed second one, your screen will look like this, 1231-1990. That's how it comes from the factory. So if you've not used the date function before, which I would assume you have not, this is how it will look. If you press your down arrow key, then you will see the next screen. Notice it says DT2. So these are just places where we put our beginning and our ending date, right? Beginning date, ending, ending date. And when we press the down arrow key again, we're going to see the screen that says DBD. DBD means the days between the dates. So whatever dates we have put in for D, DT1 and DT2, then we can calculate the number of days between those dates and we're going to use the date function in other ways also. And so when we're scrolling through anything in the date function, then we'll use up and down arrows. So how many days are between January 30th, 2018 and September 7th, 2018? And I'm going to walk you through this. So we will have to put the dates in. And to put in January 30th, notice that we're going to put in this, right? One for the month, decimal, the day, the year. And then we push the enter key, not the equals, key, not the equals button, but the enter key. That's very important when we're using any of these functions. And then your... Once you've pressed enter, the date you entered with a decimal now looks like a real date. So you would see, um, um, now your screen will look like this. That should not be a 12, that should be a 1. I need to take that and hide it right there. Right, because it's going to be January 30th, um, not December. So that's just one of my typing errors. <clears throat> and then when we press the down key, we get to our DT2, and and yes, there's another place where I haven't noticed. I've used these to teach in my CETA class. DT2 is the ending date, and we're going to put in September 7th, 2018, which is entered this way, but then looks like this once we push the enter key. So 9.0718. Now the cool part comes when we scroll down to days between dates, uh, we are going to be able to compute and find the number of days on this. And it's pretty cool that our calculator will do this for us. And so whenever we push um, compute, Right, just get on the screen where it says DBD, push compute, and you'll find that it is 220 days. It's just a pretty cool uh, little calculation that we can do here. And then on the next one, find the number of days between February 14th of 2018 and December 25th of 2018. This would be the same for every year except a leap year. 
So if it's a leap year, it would be an extra day that we put in there. But to put in February, that's the second month, so it's going to be 2.1418. And then, of course, you put that in and push Enter. And then to put in December, December 25th, it's going to be 12.2518. And, of course, you push Enter. We're going to compute days between dates, and that would give us 300 14. And then that's how we figure out the days between dates. It's a pretty quick process, but you have to practice it to really understand um, because, you know, you're using these special buttons and, and uh, it can just be a little bit confusing. And then let's look at another one. <clears throat> so days between dates on this one. July 3rd, 2016 to April 15th, 2018. So for July, that's the seventh month, so it's 7.0316. You have to put in two digits for the day and two digits for the year. April's the fourth month, so that's 4.1518. And then days between dates is what you compute. Right, press compute, and don't forget that you're going to use enter after each one of these. All right, we push enter, and we end up with 651 days. So when you're using the date function, it can actually be kind of fun, right? You can oh, uh, uh, you can ask it to compute all kinds of things and just put something in to uh, calculate. And we can use this also to find an ending date or even a, a beginning date. So it says, find the date for 79 days from June 12th, 2018. So now we're going to compute this a little bit differently. Our beginning date is going to be June 12th. So that's 6.12, right, decimal point, 18. Don't forget then you're going to push enter. And then you scroll, this time we're going to scroll to DBD, days between dates, and we put in 79 and push enter. We're computing DT2, so we're computing the ending date because that tells us um, what the date is after 79 days. And our ending date is 8.30.18. And a cool thing, too, that it tells you is that is a Thursday. All right, so you can actually compute the beginning date, the ending date, days between dates, all of those things from here. Okay, so this one says, find the date 989 days from today. And so we have to put in today's date. And so I kind of hate to use today's date. I would like to just use a generic date of some sort to work with us. So I'm going to use 129. 19 and that way I don't have to change the video every semester <laughs> um, and we're going to use 989 so this is going to be one decimal point two nine one nine we're putting in 989 and then we're going to compute and when we compute we find that that's going to be 10 14 of uh, 2021. So quite a distance in the future. Um, and so you see that this can be kind of fun. Let's see, I think there's one more. When will you be? Yeah, we'll do this one last one here and then we won't. How many days old are you today? Um, you can figure this out. Obviously, everybody's going to have a different answer on that. And so um, it just depends on what day you're working on that. Uh, when will you be 10,000 days old? Uh, once again, that's going to vary. But basically, you would put in DT1 would be your birth date. 
dbd would be 10,000. Oops. <laughs> and then you would compute uh, dt2. If you're going to say how many days old are you today, then dt1 would be your birth date. dt2 would be today's date. And then you would compute dbd. All right, so we're going to stop right there on calculating and figuring out these dates. Um, I have some on here where I told people, you know, these numbers about myself. And um, we'll just kind of skip that. So I'm just going to say skip on that. And then I will start another video in a few minutes.